Zero accounting software. Barter sale transaction. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Gonna scroll in by holding down control, scrolling up on the wheel at 175% zoom in currently opening the demo company, but doing so by selecting the reset, which will refresh the data and open the demo company. We'll then open our two major financial statement reports in a new tab. I'm gonna close this out first by right-clicking on the tab, duplicating it. I'm gonna right-click on the duplicated tab, duplicate again, go back to the middle tab, accounting dropdown. We wanna take a look at the balance sheet report. Tab to the right. We're going to the accounting dropdown. This time we want the income statement or profit and loss report. Back to the first tab, let's go to the second tab, I change the date. So I'm gonna hit the dropdown. I wanna change the date a bit on the customization for 2022. That looks good, update. So that looks good. Okay, and so then I'm gonna go back to the first tab now we're thinking about a bartering situation, one in which cash is not involved. Let's go to our flowchart over here to consider the process. Notice on the revenue side of things, usually at the end of the day, whether we have a cash-based system or a accrual-based system, we expect the cash to be going up at the end of the cycle. On the vendor side of things, at the end of the day, whether cash or accrual, we expect the cash to be going down at the end of the cycle. If we have a bartering transaction, we're just removing the cash and we're trading goods and services for goods and services. So you can kind of imagine a barter situation as if there were still cash involved, meaning you might say, okay, you give me the money for the goods and services I provide you, and then I'll give you the money back for the goods and services you provide me. Clearly, we don't need to really actually be giving physical cash in that situation due to the fact that we're just giving the cash back and forth. So we can remove the cash in reality, but we might set up the barter situation as if it's still gonna end in a cash transaction so that we can use the same format uh, for our cycles, the same forms, the same flow. What we'll do is we'll set up a cash type of account, which is really gonna be a clearing account that will net out the increases and decreases to cash that we would typically have at the end of the process and it'll just net cash back out to zero. Now note, you could do the same process using just the checking account and net out the cash back to zero, but you don't normally want to do that because the checking account needs to be tied to the, the check register. It needs to be, be tied with the bank reconciliation, I mean. And so we don't wanna mess up our bank reconciliation process. So what we can do is we can set up another account, which is a clearing account, which can be a, a checking account type of account and then we can add the full accrual process, which is what I'll show here. You could try to shortcut it and try to do a cash-based system. But if you used the accrual process, you can like track the outstanding balances for what is owed to you or what you owe to someone else, even though you don't expect to be receiving cash or paying cash, but rather expect to be receiving or giving goods and services in exchange. So we can enter, for example, on the sales side, the invoice, and then we can track when the other, the vendor, the other vendor provides us the goods and services and we can record the payment and then deposit into not the checking account, but the clearing account indicating that we have received payment in the form of goods and services provided to us. On the vendor side, we can do the same thing. We can enter a bill. We can track the outstanding accounts payable, even though we don't expect to be paid in cash. And then uh, even though we don't expect to pay in cash, and then when we pay, not with cash, but with goods and services, we can then net that out to the same clearing account, checking account 
which will then knit out and we'll and that's how we might want to record it so let's try that out let's go back on over here and let's say okay let's say we're going to barter i'm going to enter the invoice first so i'm going to say let's do an invoice kind of transaction i'll just say it's services for services although inventory same process you just have inventory that would be involved but the forms will take care of the tracking of the inventory that's why you want to do it this way because we can we can then track the forms will be used in the same way they normally would so let's say this was going to go to AAA again. I'm just setting up a new one here. We're going to say December 6th. Okay. And let's set up a new item on down below item. And I'm just going to call it service one item service one. And we'll say, okay, the price, let's say it's a uh, hundred dollars. And obviously we would have to determine if we're bartering the relevant prices of the things that we're bartering for that's one of the uses of dollars is it's supposed to give us a measuring tool of what we're providing so if you take the dollars out you still need to have some form of saying well i'm going to give you so much of what i have like i'm going to give you this and you're going to give me whatever you're going to get it still needs to have some form of measuring tool so we can determine that we're on a good basis you always no matter whether you're bartering or using cash want to make sure that the deal the negotiation between the parties is as clear as possible otherwise just as any other partnership or deal or whatever someone's going to be unhappy because their their expectations are not being met so we're going to say that we're going to say this is going to go then to sales let's say and we're not going to have any tax on it you still may have tax implications on a bartering transaction so clearly if you're using these types of forms then you can implement whether or not tax is going to be applicable with the use of the forms as well so i'm going to say okay let's save that and so what's this going to do it's going to increase the accounts receivable the other side's going to be going to sales let's approve it and check it out so i'm going to go approve let's go to our balance sheet update it we got the ar and the a to the r accounts receivable and I'm gonna scroll all the way down. Accounts receivable, there's the $100 for the invoice. Let's go back to the form, income statement, update. And then on the income side, on the sales item, scrolling all the way down, we've got the $100 here in revenue. Let's go back to the income statement. I'm gonna go back to the first tab. We can, of course, also track this and like the sub ledger report or we can go into our invoices and still track the open invoice even though we don't expect to be paid uh in cash so we could say okay we still have the open invoicing invoice that this is from aaa so i know they're going to pay me but with some goods and services that they're going to provide to us we can also track it by going to the account to the contacts customers and then we could say, okay, AAA, this is my bartering uh, person over here that they're gonna pay me later. Now we could do the same thing on the bill side of things. So let's say that uh, we're, we're, we're going to then process a bill. And so let's say, and notice that if they gave us uh, the, the, or let's say if, if it's a barter situation and we gave them the goods and services first that's then we we can track the fact that we gave them goods and services and we expect goods and services in return and track the accounts receivable if on the other hand they gave us the goods and services uh before we gave them anything right then uh we can enter the bill and track the fact that we owe them goods and services in return that's why I'm doing this in kind of an accrual process. You could have a situation where the goods and services are exchanged at the same time, and you could still use this process, or you might try to shorten it a bit by, by just going straight to the cash type of transactions, money in, money out, that are not going to the checking account, but the clearing account, which we'll get to shortly. But now let's, let's do the same thing on the bill side of things. Let's say that they provided us goods and services, and we're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna enter a bill Let's make this for BBB and we're going to say, okay, bill. And let's just say they gave us a quantity of, of a hundred dollars that goes to the account of supplies or whatever supplies. 
You don't have a supplies account? For goodness gracious' sake. So what do we got here? Entertainment. We'll go to entertainment. So they gave us some entertainment. So that so now we're this is gonna increase the AP and the other side is going to the uh, entertainment account and expense account. So we'll say approve it. And then let's go and check it out. Let's go to our balance sheet update. So now we've entered the liability side of things, which is gonna be down here. Accounts payable, A to the P. Accounts payable, AP, baby. And so it's like gravy, baby, AP. So we're gonna go down here. There's the BBB, there's the $100. Let's go back. And then I'm gonna go tab to the right and update. And then we have an expense for entertainment. And we'll go into that. And scrolling all the way down, there's the $100 on that side. Okay, so so now I'm gonna record the next component taking it out of, let's start on the revenue side, out of the receivable to us receiving, uh, receiving the payment on it. But to do that, I'm gonna make another account, which isn't gonna be the checking account. I'm gonna put, put it into the a new clearing account. So in other words, if I go to the drop down here and we go to the invoices, if we received payment on it, usually we would go into it here and say we've got payment, but it was paid to the checking account. No, we're gonna put it into another account, a clearing account, which will then net out the two here, money in, money out, back down to zero. So, so that's going to be the clearing account. So let's do, let's set up another account first by going to the accounting and let's go to the chart of accounts and set up another checking account. So I'm going to pretend that I'm connected it to bank feeds because that's the way the system's set up. So I'm going to like, yeah, it's an American Express, but no, it's not really because I'm not going to connect it at all. And then I'm going to skip the bank feed because I don't want it. Don't connect to the bank. Por favor. The name is going to be clearing account for the checking a checking clearing account and then or you might call it a bartering or trade clearing account trade just to distinguish it from any other kind of account trade clearing account trade clearing account let's do that and then i'm going to say boom other and we'll say da, 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 a number because they need something there or they won't let me do it and boom so now if i go back to my accounting and chart of accounts then now we've got our trading account there so now i can finish the transaction so now let's go to the business drop down and go to invoices and we're going to say okay they we're going to say we got paid on this one with goods and services so i'm going to say they paid us let's say whatever same day and then the paid to i'm not going to put it to the checking account but the clearing account and then then trade or whatever add that's not how you spell trade <laughs> okay i know i did that just to make the spelling people upset so i'm going to go down and then we're going to say then now we've got that hundred dollars in the clearing account and and obviously we have a decrease in the accounts receivable, which is gonna be reflected over here. And I can see that if I go to my contacts and customers, we can see in the AAA that we've got this uh, activity and it's been paid off now, it's invoice paid. Okay, so now we're gonna say that, that on the other side of things, we, we provided the goods and services on the other side to complete the barter transaction. So I'm gonna go, okay, let's go to the suppliers then. And, or let's go to, yeah, there it is, BBB. And so if I go into that, we're gonna say there's the $100. So I could say, let's go and say, uh, view the $100. And so there it is. So now we can make a payment down here 
and we're going to say the date is going to be the 6th again, let's say. And then once again, it's going from the trade account. That'll make it go back down to zero. And we'll just keep it at that and add the payment. So now the barter has been complete. If I go back to the uh, account here, this account's going to disappear when I update it because it will have been utilized or completed or, or done. And then, uh, on, and then we had the barter uh, took place. So now we've got this going back down to zero. Accounts payable has gone back down from the form that we entered. And if I go back to the first half, we can see that in the activity here by going to the contacts and the suppliers. And we want to look for BBB. So now this one has been paid off. So it's bill has been paid. So that looks good. And we've recorded the transaction. So that's how you can basically do the barter. Now, if, the, if you don't want to track the accounts receivable and payable, you might be able to go directly after you set up your checking account to a receive money form and a spend money form right and once you net those two out to the to the uh clearing account as opposed to going to the actual checking account then you should be good and just to note why that's important note that the clearing account went back to zero so you might say the checking account is overdrafted that's why it's down here you might say why don't i just do the normal process as if I got cash into the normal checking account, it'll just go up and down. The balance will remain the same. You could do that, but you don't really want to because it's gonna mess up your reconciliation because those two amounts are still gonna show up on the bank reconciliation and they're not gonna be on the bank because you didn't actually put them into the bank. So you don't really wanna put added stuff. You don't wanna use the actual checking account as a clearing account because then the, the, these transactions aren't going through the bank which you're going to reconcile to. We're not going to actually reconcile the clearing account to any bank account because it's not being double checked by the bank. So that's why you, you don't want to typically use the checking account, even though it wouldn't have an impact on the end result in terms of the dollar amount in, you know, the checking account. So that's, that is that.